Hello ladies and gentlemen, Spirit of the Law here. This time, instead of conducting my own science-y, math -y investigation into Age of Empires, I thought I'd see what real scientists have to say about the game. And specifically, what effect does playing a game like Age of Empires have on you? Is it good? Bad? Neither? Or is it both? Even more importantly, is it making you smarter? I'm sure we've all heard reports of how video games can rot your brain, or on the other side, how video games are great for you and claim to raise your IQ. It's hard to interpret all the different claims because there's so many different viewpoints, agendas, and let's face it, games come in a lot of different forms, from action to strategy to sports, so what's true for one might not be true for another. Researchers are often university professors who may or may not even have experience playing video games themselves, and that can affect how they design experiments. But wait, this channel is all about a video game, so isn't this going to be a biased, one-sided conversation? Well that's fair enough, and there may be some bias, but I'm going to make a point of only bringing up peer-reviewed studies, and I'll quote the way that they word their results directly. I have them all here, and without further ado, let's take a look at what some scientific studies have to say about Age of Empires. To start things off, here's one study from the University of Texas that had non-gamers playing less than 2 hours a week play StarCraft and Sims 2, and saw what effect 40 hours of playing these games had on different cognitive tests. They got 72 female subjects, since out of 816 applicants, only 9 males qualified for playing less than 2 hours per week, so they just didn't invite the males at all. Go figure. And they tested the participants before and after a total of 40 hours of playing StarCraft, which, not to insult your intelligence, is a real-time strategy game comparable to Age of Empires 2. The researchers had the participants play without being able to see the minimap, some adaptive difficulty, and with some other little tweaks to their number of bases to increase the number of things that were going on in the game at once, while having the control group just play The Sims 2. They compared the participants' scores before and after on attention switching tasks, the Stroop test, which is the one where you have to say the color of the word out loud instead of reading the word out loud as quickly as possible, so saying red, blue, red. They also had them do some location remembering tasks and a working memory test. Now after comparing the two groups, they found, and I quote, benefits for RTS gaming only held for the cognitive flexibility task grouping, and 40 hours of RTS video game training was sufficient to create dramatic changes in players' cognitive flexibility. They also note that cognitive flexibility has been associated with fluid intelligence and overall psychological well-being. Just to translate a bit, cognitive flexibility could be thought of as your ability to adapt to new information and changing situations. They ultimately concluded that the gaming condition that emphasized maintenance and rapid switching between multiple information and action sources led to a large increase in cognitive flexibility as measured by a wide array of non-video game tasks. Theoretically, the results suggest that the distributed brain network supporting cognitive flexibility can be tuned by engrossing video game experience that stresses maintenance and rapid manipulation of multiple information sources. Practically, these results suggest avenues for increasing cognitive function. That's a lot of science-y words, but it's definitely a positive thing that they're suggesting. I would say Age of Empires definitely counts as a game that involves rapid switching between multiple information and action sources, and absolutely creates a lot of demand for your attention in multiple places at once, requiring you to keep track of lots of things, like research, creating villagers, scouting, moving military units, refreshing lumber camps, your opponent's behavior, unit matchups, and lots more. Now it's been pretty well established that games have benefits before, but the ones that people have known about for a while concern lower level processing things, like action games training you to process visual information better, or video games increasing hand-eye coordination in young children, even to the point that residents and physicians on surgery simulators did notably better than their peers if they played video games, and people that played the most video games did the best. Now before you go thinking that playing Age of Empires means you're qualified to go operate on your friend's torn ACL, these were all actual doctors, so put that knife away. It's interesting to see research on the more cognitive side of things now starting to come out in the last few years, since that's what we're talking about when we're saying something is good for your brain. What does it do for your thinking processes? I'll come back to this idea later, but there's also that violence in video games thing that's been floating around forever. I mean, Age of Empires is technically rated teen, so maybe it's turning us into violent people. Just look at all that death. And one of the most popular mods on the Steam Workshop is for enhanced blood. So what does science have to say about that? 
Well, this study looked at how much hot sauce participants forced another person to eat as their measure of aggression. Sounds great already. Now get this, after playing Call of Duty for a while, they told the participants they had to prepare an amount of spicy chili sauce for a taste tester, who they were told hated spicy food, but was doing it for the money. The amount of chili sauce they served up for the taste tester to have to eat was used to gauge aggression. How awesome is that? You'd have to be a really angry jerk to make the taste tester eat the whole jar, right? Anyway, they did indeed find that people who had just played violent shooter video games online or offline on their own dished out more hot sauce. Genius, they're measuring aggression levels in grams here. Playing a non-violent video game like Big Planet 2 interestingly led to more aggression when played offline than online for whatever reason, but it was much less than Call of Duty. There's some other variations of the hot sauce thing too, where the participant has to drink a bitter drink at the start, supposedly made by some other dickish participant, and they have to choose how much hot sauce or gross tasting bitter drink that the other person has to drink as revenge. Pretty funny stuff. A lot of these situations are a bit artificial though, and it would be better to find a link between real gaming habits and what it does to their personality in the long run. Even if there's some evidence for violent video games increasing aggression, the backward relationship also seems to exist, where kids who play pro-social games tend to have greater social skills down the road. And I think it's fair to say there's a lot of cooperation in Age of Empires, at least in the sorts of teen games that I play. Of course, there's no way to tell if video games are making people act a certain way, or if maybe, just maybe, naturally violent people prefer to gravitate toward violent games and naturally pro-social people prefer social games. Maybe I'm crazy. Speaking of difficult to interpret correlations, but going back to the good for the brain thing, researchers have also found a positive correlation between how much 14 year olds play video games and how thick their left dorsolateral prefrontal cortex is. It's sort of an important part of the body, I guess, and it's one of the areas where planning, concentration, problem solving, decision making, and controlling your behavior happens. Losing parts of your prefrontal cortex means you have problems with planning and all that other stuff, so thickening should mean it's improving those things, right? Now, a bit of a correlation causation alert here. Just because 14 year olds who play video games have thicker dorsolateral prefrontal cortices doesn't necessarily mean the video games made them thicker. Maybe someone with a thicker cortex is just naturally better at playing video games, so it's a more rewarding experience when they start out and they're more likely to continue playing them a lot. It's possible that gaming could be the behavioral outcome and not the cause of their physiological disposition. Just like basketball doesn't make you tall. Tall people have a natural advantage, and we all like to do things that we're good at, so look at this, tall people are more likely to play basketball in their spare time. The correlation isn't super tight either, and it looks to be mostly from a group of highly active gamers playing 50 to 60 hours a week with a cortex 0.4 millimeters thicker than average. It all depends how you look at the data. Statistically though, the bottom line is it's thicker, and it certainly flies in the face of people who say video games rot your brain. Actually, if anything, it looks like it makes them bigger. On the other hand, city air pollution apparently shrinks your brain, so maybe we should all just pack up our video games, move to the country, and enjoy our bigger brains before it's too late. Okay, so that was the left dorsolateral whatever. What about the right side of the brain, you ask? Well, science has got your back there too. Another study looking at professional StarCraft players found their results suggest that in individuals without pathological conditions, Regular long-term playing of online games is associated with volume changes in the prefrontal and parietal cortices, which are associated with cognitive flexibility. It's interesting to hear that cognitive flexibility thing come up in another study, but there's a lot of suggests and two completely separate appearances of the word associated in there, so they're not saying definitely 100% proven fact. The biggest thing is that the length of time people played it was correlated with the thickness in some different brain areas, so there's even a time dependent factor here. We're starting to get a bit of a narrative here. People who play video games, particularly in the case of strategy games, are possibly strengthening areas of the brain associated with quick processing and task switching. That makes a lot of sense too, since you tend to get good at the things you practice. Even if it's not directly responsible, it's certainly fair to say that people who regularly play strategy games are better at those kinds of tasks. And for many of those people, there was probably already a natural inclination toward that type of thinking to begin with. So does this mean strategy gamers or gamers in general are smarter? Well there we have to slow down. 
There's no study linking IQ to strategy games or general gaming that I could find. One last thing to bring up though is the issue of too much gaming, and there's even a test for it apparently. The DSM-5, which is the universal authority on psychiatric diagnoses, currently doesn't recognize video games or internet addictions, but it's on the radar and considered a candidate for entry. This video might make it sound like there's a lot of research into video games, but it's really not a completely understood topic and is obviously very recent. The first thing I mentioned about StarCraft and cognitive flexibility is quoted everywhere, which makes it seem like it's really the only one looking at that particular measure to this point. As they always say in scientific papers, there's still a lot left to learn. But there's your look at some of the bigger studies on gaming and the brain. Don't forget guys, everything in moderation. Take it easy, and I'll see you next time.